I think I'm almost going to repeat what I said a minute ago. I think that, you know, again, tremendous tradition, phenomenal run here. There's only one other team in the history of one AA and FCS that has ever won three national championships in a row. These guys have the opportunity to match App State in that regard. Um, uh, 20 something game win streak. They always win in their stadium. Two national champions, number one from the beginning of the season to now. When you look at their offense, they are big, strong, and fast. They're physical. It's a well coached team. They want to come after you. Uh, they will run the ball. You know, they average 250, 260 yards, something like that, a game rushing. Uh, they have the ability to throw. You can't just rush the ball and really truly win a national championship. But they're incredibly effective running the ball. But off of that, if you're overplaying that, they can hurt you with play action. They can hurt you with the passing game. But they're going to run the ball at you. Um, if we overplay the run and are not disciplined, they'll hurt us with the pass. So we still got to understand our assignments, make our reads, then based on the threats we see, based on that read, get to the ball appropriately. Uh, from a defensive perspective, they're big, they're strong, they're physical, they're stout. Are uh, the good athletes? Uh, they got you know a couple of Americans scattered throughout their entire program, uh, uh, but they'll hit you. They're tough. They get to the ball. They know what they're doing. I'm, and their special teams have been good, effective, and sound. I mean, there's a reason why. If I said to any of you, take somebody that has won, has a potential to win this close to winning three national championships in a row, how would you describe them? You'd probably say something similar to what I just said. Yeah, you probably say something similar to what I just said. <laughs> really good defense, really good offense, really good special team, well coached, uh, good guys, strong guys, good athletes. You know, that's that's a story. This is a very, very good football team. Where are your advantages and where are your disadvantages going into this one as you look at the matchup? You know, I think the advantages we have is that I think we have a real true understanding of like who we are. I think we know what we do well and what we don't do well. The stuff that we don't do well, if we need it once in a while, we try to sneak it in there and kind of get it out right away. Uh, I think uh, they're not used to playing our type of offense. They're used to playing a little bit more power football. So they haven't seen our offense per se. They've played very, very good runners. They've played very good passers. They've played good teams. But they haven't seen our offense per se. So we think, think that that would be a little bit of an advantage. Uh, they've certain, certainly seen uh, defenses with our fronts, with our coverages. They've seen that before. Uh, yeah, I think they, they play special teams people that their special teams are just necessarily better than. I think our special teams will, will hold, will, 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 we should be able to hold our own. If you can't hold your own a special team at the playoff level, you know, it's not going to bode well for you. Uh, I think they're well aware that we gave up five yards of penalties the other week. That's going to be important going forward. I think they're aware that we don't give up turnovers easily. Uh, those types of things. So. I think they're kind of the differentials. Uh, what's an advantage? The advantage is, again, we got to focus on the stuff we can control, and they haven't really played against our offense yet. You've got a common opponent in Furman. You played them early in the year. They played them this last week. Did you take anything from those games? Did you study that? Yeah, I think, I think Furman got better and better as the season went on. If you remember, while there wasn't any question we won that game against Furman, they kept it a game. They kept it a game. And, you know, if there was an extra quarter, I still think if we played five quarters, we still would have won the game. But it was a real ball game. Now, I think it was a real ball game with these guys for a half or so. They came up with a couple of big goal line stands, and then they kind of put it away. So Furman hung with them, but Furman hung with them for a game, half, 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 for a half. Then they handled Furman. Uh, Furman is better at the end of the season, just like we are, by the way, definitely better at the end of the season than we were when we played Furman. Uh, but I don't know if there are that many comparisons you'd make necessarily in that game. Coach, uh, Monday we talked a little bit about the Furman game. It looked like North Dakota State had, uh, but I don't think you had a chance to view the film, they had two key goal line stands. Right. Uh, then they had that pick six. Uh, have you had a chance to analyze some of that footage? And what did you draw from that? Yeah, I think uh, it reinforces, again, how effective, how effective they are. But you're talking about the number one team in the country, so that shouldn't be a surprise. Um, when you're not effective doing something inside, and you got to go outside. You got to go outside. You got to throw the ball, and they read that, and they're able to get a pick six. That kind of puts a dagger in your heart. Uh, who knows what would have happened if the opposite would have happened? If, if at some point in the game when um, 
uh, North Dakota was down threatening a goal line, if Furman had come up with a goal line stand or Furman had come up with a pick six, you know, beginning of the third quarter, who knows how that would have come out. And again, North Dakota's good enough. North Dakota was supposed to beat Furman. They were supposed to beat them. Uh, so all it, all it did was kind of re reinforce the type of stuff that I think we already know, Mike. It was 10-7 at the half, though. What did they yeah. do? Yeah, I think, I think well, you you got to play your own game. I think what they do, and I think, by the way, we're good at this too. I think they do a great job of making halftime adjustments. Uh, I think they come out in the second half, and something that was hurting them in the first half, they've adapted and adjusted to. Something that uh, they found that might have been a weakness in the first half, they start to attack a little bit more. I think we tend to do the same thing. Uh, so I think both teams are well coached. I think both teams will go in at halftime and reassess everything, that, that then adjust the, the, the game plan accordingly. Our offense knows that their, their offense uh, grinds the ball. That means our defense is going to be on the field longer. Our guys got to make sure we're ready to go on the sideline. And when we go out, that's behind us, and we maintain the type of tempo that we need. If our defense is not able to stop them, with, if they hold the ball five, six minutes, and don't score, that's fine. If they hold the ball five, six, seven minutes and score, I mean, obviously then, then we're going to have a tough afternoon. Uh, we've got to be far more effective in the second half defensively, for example, than what we were against Charleston Southern. Uh, but, but we know that and we understand that. Getting to be your 15th game of the year, you, you always be proud of your guys' conditioning. How's the endurance of this team holding up? Are they still able to close out these games as you as you're expecting? <laughs> We were able to close out every game we played this year. That includes the one that we play in Columbia. We were able to close out every game that we played. We can continue to do that. We are in good shape. I think, though, the wear and tear on any football team, not just our guys, but any football team over the span of, you know, you pray you get the opportunity to go to a playoff. But now you're playing the best teams in the country. The more you win, you win against the best teams in the country. you got to travel all over the place. Sometimes you have to worry about elements, sometimes you don't. Uh, so I think after a while, I mean, the grind wears you a little bit. But I think the attitude of our guys, I mean, we want to be playing in this football game. You know, we want the opportunity to go to North Dakota and show them what we're able to do. So we want to do that. Our guys in the middle of exams, uh, you know, it was a long trip last weekend. So I think our guys are probably a little bit tired. I, I know we're a little sore, a little banged up, but that's what you'd expect from any football team that's good enough to get to the playoffs and keep winning in the playoffs. There's a grind associated with the season anyway. And, you know, certainly we'd feel that, but I think any team would probably feel that. What about yeah, flying to and from Montana, now you guys are flying to North Dakota. Is there anything special that you're planning in terms of making sure their bodies don't get tight, keeping the energy levels up? I mean, is there any extra logistics planning that goes into yeah, instead of just taking one plane, we're going to have like six really, really large jets, and we're going to have like 10 players in each jet, and we're going to take out the seats. So during the flight, our guys can kind of do some stretching, a little jogging around, and if it's big enough, we're either going to try to throw the ball around on the plane. Other than that, I'm not quite sure. This team's good enough. They know how to handle the business, or so do the coaches. That impact will have zero on the game, zero. Here's what they're going to do. First of all, they know right now, they know Craig's going away only. They know the defensive coordinator is the head coach of North Dakota State. Everybody knows that right now. Right now, I guarantee you, everybody on the staff knows exactly who's leaving, who's staying, what they're doing, and how they're going to handle it. I guarantee you, without knowing this, they've already talked to the team. They've done this. These guys have a chance to win three national championships. They want that to be part of, part of their legacy. Part of the deal, I'm sure, that he negotiated with Wyoming was, hey, you've got to allow us to finish this thing. Wyoming clearly said yes to that. That would have been a big deal. They're not going to let that go. They are 100% focused on this game, period. The only difference is they probably stay later in the week instead of going home when everything's over and make calls for recruiting for Wyoming. That's what they're doing. The new head coach at North Dakota State probably making calls to his buddies to see who he can hire. So at night, they might be doing something different than they would normally do. 
but they are absolutely focused on this game. It will they, not one coach and not one player will not have his focus on this game. How's Nicolo doing? Good. Is he going to be ready to go? Uh, he, he's big for you, Montana, with two scores. Is he going to be ready to go this uh, Saturday? Yep, he'll be ready to go. You know, FYI, he was one of the finalists for the National Football Hall of Fame Foundation uh, at the Waldorf Astoria last night. You know, didn't get it. Uh, Cody just told us the tackle from Penn State did. But I mentioned this the other night. I, I, I want us to get this. I, there are 60,000 players, 60,000 college players in the United States, Division Three, Division Two, II, Division One, period. 60,000. They pick 16 of 60,000 for the Scholar Athlete Award for the Campbell Trophy. That is not a little deal. That is humongous to have a player at Coast Carolina who's done well enough on the field and so well in the classroom that he was selected as 16 out of 60,000 in the country. That's a big deal to me. That's a big deal to Coastal. I think that's a big deal. That doesn't happen much any place. So, he didn't get it. But yeah, he's back. He's coming back today. What, what award are we talking about? The, 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 the one you're in the top five for. The, yeah. I didn't, I didn't find out about that till last night. I'm flattered. I'm flattered. But any coach will tell you that's because of the success of our program. That's because of our players. That's because of our staff. That's because of our operations guys, the job that they did in Montana. Uh, you know, I, I, think, I think we are putting together a program that, frankly, all the coastal community, Horry County, Myrtle Beach, the Strand, et cetera, should be very, very, very proud of. Uh, I think any team in the country would be proud of the program we're putting together here. So that's the reason why I'm incredibly honored, but that's the reason why I get that type of accolade, because of the effort that everybody's made around here. Let's talk about the atmosphere <coughs> of playing at that Fargo Dome. Are you going to come to practice tonight? Okay, well, if you do, you'll see what we're doing. Okay? Are you going to put a big dome over the practice today? Yeah, well, I can't tell you. I was going to give it away. It's a surprise. <laughs> we have played in loud stadiums before. By the way, all of our guys thought uh, Montana was louder than South Carolina. They thought South Carolina was louder than Liberty, but Liberty was really, really loud. Uh, there's no one, no one that thinks you're going to ever face anything louder than this one, except for maybe the Superdome. <coughs> so. Unrelated to this game, uh, just follow up on our report. Do you guys get out of playing Clemson next year? I know you didn't want to play those FBS teams. Yeah, we're not playing Clemson. Did you? All right. I didn't know how to, how did you get out of that? You, just you said you didn't want to play Clemson. I think good. I mean, I think when you did what we did last week, I think, I think our guys believe that if we give it our best shot and we're focused, that there isn't anything we may not be able to achieve. I think that's the way our guys feel. I think our guys also understand that we are not invincible by any stretch of the imagination, and we've got areas where we're weak. So if we don't really focus and don't really go after it, against people that are really good, we're not going to be able to take care of business. So at the end of the day, you know, I think our guys are confident, but I think they're realistic. I think our strength is we know our strengths. And one of those strengths is we're going to give you everything we've got. If that's good enough, then we could have a positive outcome. If everything we've got is not good enough, then it's not going to work out. But at the end of the day, we're going to give you everything we've got. Excuse me. FCS pick six leader. Uh, what answer do you have for that guy? Because he sounds like a real threat. Yeah, probably not throw at his side. So we find out where he is, so we don't want to throw at him. That's right? simple, huh? Yeah. Yeah, literally, yeah, that's simple. Then if he starts to fall asleep, come back and surprise him. Go ahead and go. <laughs> Give him one of those moves. <laughs> I mean, see if he see if he can cover. See if he can cover Niccolo. I mean, where they have a good team. 
Not every good team has star players, but they've got a good team. They've got a good team. So he's not as effective as a corner. I know he's an All-American corner, but he's not as effective as a corner like without a good pass rush, for example. These guys are good. These guys are good. So at this level, you know, the best players on the best team in the country, you know, they're All-American quality type people. This kid's certainly one of those. Yeah, I feel like it's uh, still the same amount of confidence. You know, anytime you play anybody, you got to have confidence. You got to have a certain attitude that, you, uh, that you're going to win and that you're going to come out on top. So I feel like uh, it did give us a little bit of boost, but, you know, we're still just going to come in with the same attitude as, as being uh, the same team that we've been all this year and just going to get better and play with the same confidence that we've been having. Well, I feel like we just got to get to work, you know, not focus too much on – who we're playing, well, like the 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 seed we're playing, but focus on who we're playing and focus on the the game plan and the scheme that we're drawing up just to beat these boys. That was a big win last week, but I mean this one, this is this is the creme de la creme. These guys are the. What would this one mean? Uh, it would mean a lot. You know, it's crazy. Like, you know, Quinn back is that's my roommate, and like a year ago around this time, we was texting while we was home after we lost to ODU. Just we get the opportunity to play these boys, we can beat them. And now we got the opportunity, and we just got to, got to get out there and play. Why do you think that? You've watched them. You certainly watched them. I feel like you know they really, they haven't played an offense that we have, like a team that we have. Like I feel like the guys that we have here are just so determined and want want to actually win. And I think like we got the team to do it.